Hello guys, this is Justin from MotoCookie.com and in this tutorial we're going to be approaching the process of baking an ambient occlusion map uh, for a scene or for an object. It depends what you want to use it for. In most cases, uh, an ambient occlusion map is used uh, for, um, for game projects. Uh, and it uh, it also uh, used in in the post processing uh, uh, part of an image. If you want to, I don't know, edit it in Photoshop or After Effects or anything, you might want to. Excuse me. Uh, you might want to output an ambient occlusion pass, but an ambient occlusion pass is completely uh, different from what we're going to do today. Uh, what we're going to do is a ambient occlusion map, an ambient occlusion bake of an object. First, uh, first thing that you need to know before starting to bake an ambient occlusion map is that the objects that are being baked need to have a UV map. So what I have here is a scene it's nothing very complicated but nothing very very simple uh, it's just enough to make it interesting so this scene is built out of primitives and the uh, the normal map let me just get my lists here I'm working in a confined um, limited space so uh, the UV map was already generated oh, I'm sorry uh, this this is from my previous tests so you wouldn't get this right now but let me just clear it out uh, what you would get is a mess of polygons overlapping each other because um, every every map from every primitive that was created gets created in here with a basic map so if you create a sphere there's gonna be a standard UV map that matches a sphere so th the scene is is very very simple you can see here it's rendered it looks like this but we're not gonna be interested in that so Let's uh, let's create the UV map. So this this is a tutorial. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the detail of unwrapping and everything. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the UV projection tool up here uh, with an atlas projection uh, type. So I'm just gonna click in the viewport and I'm gonna get a very very basic uh, UV map here. It's it's completely out of shape. It's unoptimized. It's it, it, you wouldn't want a UV map like this if you were doing, say, uh, a, a game object or um, something something very important. Okay, so but we're we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it like this for our purposes, so we can bake the ambient occlusion map. So the first step is to get a UV map. Okay, we did that. What's next? Well, next we have to go over to the shader um, tab here into the render uh, node, and we're gonna go to Add Layer Special Render Output. Except that we're gonna change it from Final Color to Ambient Occlusion. Okay, so if you switch over to the Properties tab, you're gonna see at the bottom that we have the Ambient Occlusion. Uh, options. In order to tweak the options to our needs, we're gonna switch over to the render tab and from the effect we're gonna choose ambient occlusion. And you're gonna see that it's pitch black. Well that's for a reason. We have the occlusion range set to zero. Well in order for it to work in a confined space in a closed space because the room is basically a box with its sides flipped 
you need to have a set occlusion range. Uh, right now, this occlusion range is is telling Moto to look for uh, to to shoot rays at an uh, at a basically at an infinite space. Well, we don't want that. We want it to shoot rays uh, to look for geometry at say 500 millimeters. And you're gonna see immediately that we start to get some some results here. It may not be what we want. So uh, the next step would be to fine tweak the occlusion range. Well, I already did that in uh, my previous tests, and I know that for this scene, 50 millimeters or well, basically a, a value between 30 and 50 is gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna pick 40 millimeters here. And then we're gonna talk a bit about occlusion rain, uh, rays. Uh, the occlusion rays basically tell us the, the how, how many samples uh, does, does it take. For example, at 64, we're getting a decent result not very clean but not very uh, harsh either uh, rays work like this the lower the number the noisier should I say the result the higher the number the cleaner the result but in most of my projects I rarely went um, above 256 rays. 256 rays gives you, excuse me, uh, a pretty, pretty clean result. But you see, if you look here in the viewport, you're gonna still see some noise. Well, do not be alarmed. Uh, that's because our viewport here is uh, quality is set to draft. If we set it to final render quality, you're gonna see that the noise fades with time uh, but I like to keep it at uh, at draft quality so I get fast previews okay so let's talk about the other settings well basically um, in an ambient occlusion map these are the only two settings that you're interested in you don't want to mess with the white level because what that does is bring your um, your white level down basically br brings the the whites up so y you don't really want to mess with it unless I don't know you have some <laughs> type of uh, special needs or you wanna say get a like really get into those corners but for this purpose we're gonna leave it at one uh, clamp threshold uh, it, it won't really affect uh, normal map if clamp colors is off and we do want it off. On pre-multiply colors it's all about the matting so if you get um, for example if on the alpha output if you have if you just want to mat out say the, uh, the teapots here you want you would want to have unpre multiply colors on because um, if if then you extract the the teapots out of the out of the image you won't get a very uh, you will you will get a soft outline and not a very uh, sharp and jaggedy outline anyway uh, that's uh, over uh, our needs here let's just focus on baking ambient occlusion so now that we got this set the way we want it uh, we need to go over to the render node and make sure that our frame width and height are square because UV maps are square so we're gonna need um, a square output because we are going to bake to the render outputs so it's gonna use this width and height 
for this tutorial I'm just gonna use 512 by 512 because it renders faster and the other settings don't really matter um, they're basically uh, the defaults so next the next step would be to go and make sure that we have our original bas basically the UV map that we need to bake to selected uh, this is aimed at scenes with more than one UV map uh, because if you only have one UV map uh, it's gonna be selected anyway if you have more than one you need to select the one that you want to bake to and then you go over to the render menu which is slightly off screen and to bake to render outputs and you're gonna see that we get uh, we get a result here but it's not what we're looking for but it actually is um, we're getting this because we didn't have the only the ambient occlusion output selected we also had alpha and final color output so if we go in here and change to ambient occlusion we're gonna get exactly what we're looking for uh, one thing that I want to mention is that be careful with your alpha output. Um, Modo uses the alpha output to to tell where the edges of the UV islands are. So if you don't have an alpha output, you might get strange uh, results. Okay, so in order to view our UV, our uh, I'm sorry, our uh, ambient occlusion. We're going to go and save the image. Uh, I'm just going to save it like that. And let's just go over here to the model tab. We're going to change the camera. Let me change back the frame. And if we add this image that we did, you're going to see that we have a pretty good ambient occlusion map. Um, and it's completely uh, real time as you can see it's like a it's like a I don't know a baked lighting map or something like that so I hope you uh, you find find this uh, useful and I'll see you next time on motocookie.com